Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to an exciting Wednesday night for Talk Nerdy To Me. So instead of having it on Fridays, we're now on Wednesdays. It's exciting. There are people joining us already. That's how committed they are. The numbers are screaming up. Absolutely fantastic. But before we get too far, I've got to introduce my co-hosts. We've got MPS and Jeffro. Lads, how are we tonight? We're excellent. Yeah, so sticking with the theme of um, uh, like classic Hollywood and the 50s and all the rest of it, a couple of weeks ago we actually asked people what year did they want to revisit this time around and, of course, MPS, I'm going to pass this one over to you. You've been quiet for a little while. What year have we got? We've got 1954 and I thought you were going to say, you know, we're talking about old stuff tonight So because we kind of are. So 1954. Who was around in 1954? Uh, probably not many of us actually, uh, but 1954 had a few interesting things, which surprised me because I thought that we sort of had, you know, a lot of technological uh, advancements from the 80s, 70s, and that sort of thing. But 54 had some interesting ones. So in terms of science and technology, uh, polio vaccinations became a thing. So there you go. We're talking about the, the COVID-19 and, and, you know, all that sort of stuff. But polio vaccinations came around that time in 1954. The first successful kidney transplant. So that would have been interesting back in the day prior to, you know, having all this keyhole surgery that we have now. So what do you got? They pull the kidney out of one person and they go to the next person and go, uh, where does this go? <laughs> <laughs> It's got that, it's like playing Operation for real. It just, instead yeah. of going, when you hit the sides, it's someone going, oh. Well, um, what happens if they stick it in and they go, hang on, is that dude supposed to have three kidneys? <laughs> I goes, two, is it? One, two, whatever. <laughs> uh, the first nuclear powered submarine, the USS Nautilus, was launched. It's named straight after uh, uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, if I'm not mistaken, Jeffro. Nope, oh, he's frozen. Continue on. He's, he's under the yeah, sea. Absolutely. Uh, the Boeing 707 is released after about two years of development. The Boeing uh, six, uh, 367-80 or the Dash 80, the prototype of the, of the 707 series makes its maiden flight. Yeah. Uh, TV dinners are introduced. <laughs> How's that? You just think, oh, yeah, they just popped up from somewhere. Uh, by on American entrepreneur Jerry Thomas. Now, look, I don't really do this often, but there's two sports-related things, and I know that Phil's just mentioned one of them, that uh, uh, Footscray, who are now not Footscray anymore, but Footscray won the, the grand final that year. And one for most of us, probably when we were in our teens, Sports Illustrated was first published back in the US in 1954. Uh, in everyday sort of life, 29 million... US households had television sets. Now, if you think about the numbers back then, you didn't think there were 29 million people in the world, let alone just in, in the States. So, uh, but yeah, 29 million, which was uh, double the number in service three years earlier. And sales of comic books reached 20 million copies per month. Wow. So, I know when you think about how many comic books must be going out now, uh, it's that back then that was in, insane. So, uh, in arts and entertainment, now here we've got uh, a couple of bits and pieces. One was uh, one, probably what well, the most famous song that we would probably remember from that era was Mr. Sandman. <laughs> so my question is for the for the people out in there, and we know everyone's going to buzz this in real quick. What time travel film was Mr. Sandman sung in? Oh, time travel. I was thinking of going. You, you Jeffo. Thinking um, it would have um, time after time or something like that. Um, thinking no. back to the future. Yeah, back to the future. Yeah. I originally yeah, thought so you were going to ask what kind of car was named after a Sandman. And I was going to say that was a panel van, but uh, I got that completely oh, wrong. Panel van, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
and in terms of knocking, uh, don't bother knocking yeah uh especially if her name's sandy um and i don't normally do this but books a couple of books uh came out one that jeffro will mention in a second but for me one of my favorite books of all time was was uh published in 1954 that was lord of the flies so that was where the uh all the boys were were marooned on an island and they uh, had to live by themselves for a period of time until they were rescued and i love that book now from that book there was the the black and white film that they that they they made for that uh then about 2000 they did a, a re imagining of it with uh, a group of uh cadets and then i believe in recent times in the last couple of years they've done a female an all female cast version of that film which i haven't seen which i think would be pretty interesting uh and that's it that i all i can mention from the time being because some of the stuff i want to mention is from the uk which is old jeff rose area Actually, it's very funny. A lot of people are obviously very switched on because Ange, Colin, and somebody else had mentioned Back to the Future as well. So, uh, Jeffro, you're a disappointment. Oh, we've lost Jeffro. So there you go. All right. So um, we'll just move on to. Uh, so, what are we going to mention about uh, other things for 1954? Well, we've lost our lad. Well, there's a couple of other things, but uh, we'll, I'll talk about the movies and TV when you go through your stuff, and then cool. we'll come All back right. and bring around right. Jeffro. Cool. No worries. So 1954 was a big year. Everything's a big year for science fiction movies. It's all very, very good. Now, some people can think of a couple off the top of their heads without any thinking at all, which is kind of groovy. But there's actually a few more than you might realise. So in no particular order, I was actually surprised by this myself, actually. 1954, the movie then comes out. Gigantic ants running around, terrorising the city. What can I say? Big ants. So, uh, and I tell you what, you know, hell of, need a hell of a lot of Peebo to kill them. So, uh, the film uh, then came out absolutely fantastic. I always love the name them. It's not like the giant ants that took, destroyed the city, just them by itself with an exclamation mark. I always thought that was kind of groovy. So, uh, there you go. Um, two movies that came out produced by the same person in the same year. That's how fast they used to make these things back then. So, you had one movie called Gog and another one called Riders into uh, Riders to the Stars, both produced by the same person, Ivan Tours. And if you think filmmaking was quick, well, if they can knock over a movie in 15 days, that's principal photography, you got to admit you're doing pretty good when that happens. So no wonder they could produce two movies in one year. Tobor the Great uh, came out that year. I think Tobor was a gigantic monster, uh, robot rather, because uh, Tobor, as you know, if you spell it backwards, is what? Robot. Very good. Well done. Just checking. Very cool. Now, if you like a bit of dominatrix, uh, dominate, dominatrix, matrix, dominatrix, dominatrix, whatever, women wearing black type clothing, the devil girl from Mars. So there you go. They're talking today about launching rockets into space tomorrow to get to the space station in preparation to going to Mars. Well, if they get there, maybe they'll meet the devil girl from Mars. So, uh, and of course, what was she here for? She was here in a, on Earth to pick up dudes to take back to Mars to repopulate the planet. How good is that? So um, put your hand up if you've got nothing better to do next Saturday night. So uh, how <laughs> so, so, this is very funny. Back then, it was always about women finding dudes to try and repopulate their, their dwindling population. So make of that what you will. I'm sure some feminists would be a bit upset by that. But anyway, her name was Nia, and she had that very dominatrix look about her. And actually, there was a robot in that movie called Charney. Now, of course, if you're really switched on, you should know straight away, you won't know MPS, and even mm. Jeffro won't know, but Charney, of course, is referenced in another famous science fiction piece of work and see how fast our audience is to um, um, figure that one out. So I'm going to leave that to you for the moment. So there you go. Uh, and believe it or not, the sound editor for The Devil Girl from Mars was Jerry Anderson. Oh, there we go. Catherine got it from June, and Catherine would know that because her dog, was once called Charney, and of course she named that after the character from June. So well done there. Very good. Her dog's name. So there you go. Um, so Jerry Anderson was the sound designer uh, uh, for uh, Devil Girl from Mars, but he was credited under the name of Gerald Anderson. So, and you knew that Jerry Anderson was working on that movie because every time he walked into the studio, they'd be going, "How you going, Jeff? Uh, Jerry?" And he'd be just walking going. I'm good today. <laughs> hey, guys. How you doing? Yeah, guys. Hey, I need someone to push my button anyway. So uh, the next one after that, uh, a classic uh, movie is because uh, they just produced so much of this stuff so fast, Target 
earth, right? How good is that? How fast can you film a movie? Seven days, one week, done, dusted, in the can. There we go. And we're talking about it 60-something years later. How good is that one? Very good. Uh, hang on, was this, Tobal was my break, hang on. Colin Parkinson said, Tobal was my break dancing name way back. Colin had a great dancing name, Tobor. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I want to see the move. Way. Hey, 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 um, Colin, you're going to have to bust the move, mate. <laughs> Tobor, give us the go for. All right, now, Jeff yeah. Rose back. Now, if you break down this time, dude, you're in trouble, all right? So, very good. All right, so we move on, shall we? So, uh, another movie that came out, and, of course, everybody's talking about um, – uh, Cities evacuated. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So if you see Target Earth, there's a classic scene where the whole city's evacuated and they film it in the morning. Uh, invaders from Venus. Invaders, mate. It's always invading either from Mars or from Venus. What can I say? They're always attacking our bloody um, our planet. Twenty thousand leagues under the sea. Unlike the other movies, which were churned out in less than a week. Uh, good old um, Twenty Thousand Leagues was a huge film produced by Walt Disney himself. He actually personally did it with a nine million dollar budget. 1954, 9 million bucks. Uh, and, of course, um, it featured James Mason as Nemo and Kirk Douglas as well. So you compare 20,000 Leagues next to some of the other films that I've mentioned, and it is a real chalk and cheese sort of scenario. So produced in Cinemascope, big widescreen, absolutely fantastic. And, of course, it won two Oscars for art direction and for special effects, as you would expect. The next major one. Uh, from 1954, absolute classic. And if we had the vile watching tonight, he would be just jumping out of his computer screen. Was, of course, The Creature from the Black Lagoon, filmed in 3D. How good is that? So you had the old Gill Man, who became a famous universal monster. And, of course, there were two actors who played him, one for swimming and one for sort of running around above screen. And, of course, what was Gill Man trying to do? Steal the girl, as you do. So there you go. He doesn't care about the boat. He doesn't care about the dudes. He doesn't care about the weapons. He's after the chick. So uh, monsters and girls, what can I say? They go hand in hand. Why is anybody's guess? So there you go. Now, he died at the end of the movie, as we all know, well know, but sure enough, he came back the very next year for the sequel. How good is that? The Revenge of the Creature. So you can't let a good gill man die when things are going very, very tough for you. So there you go. Um, now, of course, uh, there was a movie called Stranger from Venus. Once again, Venus comes back into itself. It's not Mars. It's bloody Venus. Why can't those two just invade each other? Um, it was a UK film, and it was actually released as a, uh, a disaster. It was – oh, that's right. They changed the name to Immediate Disaster in the US because they felt the name was too similar to the day the earth stood still, which was still showing, even though it was a 1951 movie, still showing in the cinemas, and Patricia Neal was in both movies. So they had a slight case of, uh, yeah, change of title, son. So uh, in America, it was called Immediate Disaster, but for the rest of us, it was Stranger from Venus. A couple more. We have Monsters from the Ocean Floor, and, of course, Jeff, I would know this one. I don't know if he knows it off the top of his head, but it was Roger Corman's first movie as a producer. So there you go. Made for roughly 15000 to 30000 bucks. Big difference from $6 million, or was it $9 million for... Uh, yeah, nine million dollars for twenty thousand leagues, so fifteen thousand to thirty thousand bucks, and uh, there you go. And it was filmed. Forget the seven days; that is just way too long. Six days done. Thank you very much for coming. Six days in the can. Yeah. Pack up, go home. Everybody is good. Uh, a couple more. We got Manhunt in Space, which was if you know your Rocky Jones Space Ranger series. They actually just edited three episodes together into a movie. Um, we had the Rocket Man, which featured Anne Francis uh, a cup two years before the Forbidden Planet came out. It was a comedy, believe it or not. Now, how's this for us? Now, you think the Rocket Man, it's a dude with a rocket flying around the world doing stuff, right? Nah. What's it about? A boy gets hold of a ray gun, which forces people to tell the truth. So I reckon they should point that at a few politicians. That'd be pretty groovy, wouldn't they? <laughs> Two more, two more, lucky last two more. Uh, you've got the Atomic Kid, which is a very, very famous one where Mickey Rooney, right, survives a nuclear explosion. Now, if you remember Indiana Jones and last, uh, what was it, Chris Kingdom the Crystal Skull nuking the fridge? Well, in this case, he survives a nu uh, getting nuked as well. And, of course, he's completely radioactive. So he's walking past slot machines in Las Vegas and they're all jackpotting and all sort of business. So uh, you can almost argue that um, Indiana Jones in Crystal Skull was inspired by the Atomic Kid. So there you go. And it's actually referenced in Back to the Future in because uh, it's set in 1955. And lucky last, I know you want to hear me stop talking, Child's Play. Now, of course, Child's Play, when you think of it, is with Chucky, right, walking around with a knife killing things. Nah, not this version. In this one, kids split the atom, right, and make a new form of popcorn. 
<laughs> no idea what the deal is with that. So uh, there you go. There's a few. Look, a few people are saying, uh, what have we got here? We will have to check out the sequel to Creature. I don't know who wrote that. Uh, I wouldn't hold your breath. Stick with the first movie and definitely don't watch the third one. It is horrendous. So there you go. Um, and love the film. Very good. Magic Rock, there was a flying superhero film too. Very good. So uh, if I bust them, yep. Oh, hang on. I like that. I like that thing from Colin. If I bust the move now, nowadays it will do more than just uh, bust, his, just bust his back. So there you go. Anyway, Jeffro, are you online? Are you able to work? I well, hope so. Jeffro, so there I you go. made a promise with God. I made a promise with God that I'm not cracking any jokes next week. So uh, hopefully <laughs> if I get through the rest of this, then um, we won't hear any jokes next week. So uh, right. uh, I said, uh, I'm, get, I'm definitely getting the hint. Okay, so on the UK scene, probably the biggest event in terms of uh, um, science fiction and fantasy was that uh, 1954 was the year that we saw uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's uh, first release of The Fellowship of the Ring and The Two Towers. So uh, basically um, the last book that he did was way back in 1937, which was The, the Hobbit. So a long time between drinks between him, but... Uh, this was the uh, the big year, so uh, uh, he wrote it in stages between 1937 and 1949. So, as I said, uh, but it certainly the uh, the time that he spent doing that paid off, and of course it became you know a huge uh, unpopular um, uh, book. And I mean, it's listed in everyone's top ten books of all times, pretty much, uh, and it also became one of the biggest selling books in history with over 150 million copies so um worth taking the time to uh spend what uh 12 years sort of uh getting all that uh, honed down uh on the uh, the comedy front uh this was the uh the year that uh tony hancock uh launched his uh, radio comedy show hancock's half hour so most people would tend to remember it as uh, a tv show so uh, that was actually broadcast on uh TV and um, I said he was certainly a household name in terms of comedy in the uh, the UK. On the uh, going back to the book front, this was the year that we saw James Bond uh, Live and Let Die by Ian Fleming. So this was the the second one in the um, in the book series. So that was um, that was sort of quite a significant one to be able to sort of uh, have uh, after Casino Royale. In terms of books, I don't know whether anyone else had to read this in high school, but I certainly did. But uh, William Golding's uh, Lord of the Flies, that was uh, released in this year. Uh, yeah, it's funny. Um, Jeff Rowe, EPS yeah. covered that off when you were actually out uh, not working. So we've already done there it. There you go. Time. So um, deja vu. Okay. And uh, the UK people that were born in this year, because I mean, not many people died of interest, but... Uh, Certainly a lot were born. So uh, I'll just cover off the names and see how many you actually recognise. So I'm not going to say who who or what they are, but uh, we have Ian Banks, Anthony Head, Neil Tennant, Joe Jackson, and not Michael Jackson's father. It's the, the other guy. Uh, Elvis Costello, not his real name, by the way. Uh, Adam Ant. Not his real name as well, and uh, Annie Lennox, OBE. So they're the people that were born in 1954. Some of them um, are holding up their age quite well. Well, Adam Ant would have been Adam Ant's real name is them, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's a good trivia question. <laughs> I, I do actually know his name, but I just can't think of it off the top of my head. No, I think you're out. I, 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 I get the joke from MPS because the first uh, 1954, the Ant movie, then came out. Yeah. So there you go. And Tracy was right. Uh, yes, Anthony Head was from Buffy. So there you go, Mr. Giles. So, but uh, oh, look at this. Everybody's right. Yep, yep, it's all good. Yep, Giles. Yep, we got him. So there you go. Um, all right. So, MPS, what have you got? I think you wanted to finish off with something, didn't you? Nice and quick. Yeah, I've got a couple, got a couple of things to finish off. Uh, the last new episode of the Lone Ranger radio program broadcast uh, in September after, get this. 21 years and 2,956 episodes over that time period. Mm. So that was pretty intensive. Do you remember the old joke? What's the closest thing to silver? The Lone Ranger's bum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, you heard the other, have you heard the other joke? 
No, uh, no, no jokes from you. You break your okay. internet when you crack jokes. In, in, <laughs> in, the, uh, in the West, where did you go to uh, broker some money? The loan arranger. <laughs> Jesus. Like Stan Catch, huh? Yeah, very good. Um, Move on. All right, some other movies that came out in that year just uh, that we would know of. Uh, Rear Window mm. came out. Dial in for murder. Uh, let's see if my, it's not going to do what I want it to do. See, Colin got it right. Adam Ant's real name is Stuart Goddard. So there you go. Right, for, thank you. Very good. Anyway. Um, uh, TV shows, The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin, not Tin Tin, the orange-haired little guy. Rin Tin Tin, which was a dog. Uh, the Ed Sullivan Show. Uh, I Love Lucy was still running in 1954. Wow. Um, Dragnet was still on, if you remember that. Uh, these are all shows that I remember that were replayed here, so they weren't new or anything, but these were replayed over the years. Uh, Flash Gordon, the TV series, that started uh, 54 and 55. Howdy Doody, and no, we're not talking about that sort of duty. It still, was still going. Uh... And in terms of TV, they're the ones that we would probably remember the most. Very good. Very, very good. So there you go. So there you go, everybody. There's 1954 wrapped up in a whole lot of uh, discussions with movies and what TV shows there were back at the time. Remember, it's not like um, Back to the Future where he watches the TV show and says, oh, I saw this in a rerun. Uh, yeah, everything was first issue back then and no VCRs to record anything. So if you weren't there that night to watch it, too bad. So sad. So uh, there you go. So, um, and of course, if you know your history, TV is what uh, really threatened the movie industry at the time. And it's one of the reasons why you have widescreen films because uh, cinemas realized that they had to entice people to stay at the cinema. And of course, they um, come up with the idea of widescreen cinema scope and all that sort of stuff try and entice the audiences back into the movie houses which worked so how good is that there you go anyway mm -hmm. we're gonna pause off see it nerd is the word i like that nerd is the word uh w-e-r-d very very nerd, 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 nerd That's the the word. look at that nerd is the word i love that how very very cool all right so uh very good all right so we're gonna see you next week uh and remember stay nerdy okay party hard and rock on see ya wait